Friday, third week after Pentecost, morning meditation, June 18th, 2021. <clears throat> Meditations are taken from Meditations and Readings for Every Day of the Year by St. Alphonsus de Liguori, Bishop and Doctor of the Church, First Choices Teacher in Moral Theology, Act of Faith in the Presence of God, and Nomina Pace, Fili, Spirit of Sancti, Amen. Most holy, adorable, and undivided Trinity, one God and three persons, I believe that thou art here present. I adore thee with the deepest humility, and render to thee with my whole heart the homage which is due to thy sovereign majesty. Grant me the grace to pray as I ought. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. O blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and my mother, I ask for the grace to continue to pray. St. Alphonsus de Liguori, pray for us. Christian soul, reflect on these every day of your life. There is one God to glorify one eternity to prepare for, saints and angels to call upon, one life to use well, one body to mortify, one death to suffer, one hell to avoid, one judgment to confront, one Jesus to imitate, one soul to save, neighbors to edify, one world to be detached from, sins to expiate for, passions to subject to our will, virtues to acquire, one heaven to win, Act of humility, litany of humility, O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being culminated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged, Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being suspected. Deliver me, Jesus, that others may be loved more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may become holier than I, provided that I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we ask your guidance in this, our morning meditation, through the intercession of thy blessed Mother Mary of a Virgin. Ave Maria, grazia, upon dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, and benedictus fructus ventris tui Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mata Dei, or per nobis peccatoribus, milk ni hor mortis nostri. Amen. In honor of St. Joseph, our guardian angel, and all the saints, we pray Gloria Patria, Filio, Spiritu Sancto, Secret Eric, and Principio, Nuke et Semper, and Secula, Seculorum. Amen. <coughs> Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and it shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, and instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Ghost. Grant in that same spirit that we may be truly wise, ever to rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Morning Meditation. How to Converse Continually and Familiarly with God. Quote, O taste and see that the Lord is sweet. Our God dwelleth in the heights of heaven, and yet he disdains not to occupy himself day and night with his faithful servants in their cottages or their cells. There he bestows on them his divine consolations, which surpass all the delights the world can give. Never then forget God's sweet presence. By reason of his immensity, our God is in every place. But there are two places, above all, where he has his own peculiar dwelling. One <clears throat> is the highest heaven, where he is present by that glory which he communicates to the blessed. The other is upon earth within the humble soul that loves him, quote, who dwelleth with a contrite and humble spirit, 
Isaiah 42, verse 15. He then, our God, dwells in the heights of heaven, and yet he disdains not to occupy himself night, day and night with his faithful servants in their cottages or their cells. And there he bestows on them his divine consolations, <coughs> each one of which surpasses all the delights the world can give, and which he only does not desire, who has no experience of them. Quote, O taste and see that the Lord is sweet. Psalm 33, 9. Friends in this world have hours in which they converse together, and other times during which they are apart. But between God and you, if you wish, there shall never be one hour of separation. Quote, Thou shalt rest, and thy sleep shall be sweet. The Lord will be at thy side. Proverbs 3, 24. You may sleep, and God will place himself at your side and watch with you continually. Quote, I will repose myself with him, and he shall be a comfort in my cares and grief. Wisdom 8, 9 through 16. When you take your rest, the Lord departs, not from your pillow. He continues thinking always of you, that when you wake in the night, he may speak to you by his inspirations and receive from you some act of love, of oblation, of thanksgiving so as to keep up even in those hours his gracious and sweet converse with you. Sometimes also he will speak to you in your sleep and cause you to hear his voice. Then on waking, you may put in practice what he has spoken. Quote, I will speak to him in a dream. Numbers twelve six. He is there also in the morning to hear from you some word of affection, of confidence, to be depository of your first thoughts and of all the actions which you promised to perform that day to please him. Of all the griefs, too, which you offer to endure willingly for his glory and love. But as he fails not to present himself to you at the moment of your waking, fail not you on your part to give him immediately a look of love and to rejoice when your God announces to you the glad tidings that he is not far from you <clears throat> as once he was by the reason of your sins, but that he loves you and would, would, be, would be beloved by you. And at the same moment, he gives you the gracious precept, quote, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart. Deuteronomy 6, 5. <clears throat> Never then forget God's sweet presence, as do the greater part of men. Speak to him as often as you can, for he does not grow weary of this or disdain it, as do the lords of the earth. If you love him, <clears throat> you will... Not be at a loss what to say to him. Tell him all that occurs to you about yourself and your affairs, as you would tell it to a dear friend. Look not upon him as a haughty sovereign who will only converse with the great and on great matters. He is our God, delights to abase himself to converse with us, loves to have us communicate to him our smallest daily concerns. He loves you as much as he as and has as much care for you as if he had none others to think of but yourself. <clears throat> he is as entirely devoted to your interests as though the only ends of his providence were to succor you and his almighty power to aid you and his mercy and goodness take pity on you to do you good and gain by delicate touches of his kindness your confidence and love. Manifest then to him freely all your state of mind and pray to him to guide you to accomplish perfectly his holy will. And let all your desires and plans be simply bent to discover his good pleasure and do what is agreeable to his divine heart. Quote, commit thy way to the Lord, Psalm 36, verse 5. And desire of him to direct thy ways and that all thy counsels may abide in him. Tobias 4, 20. Say not, but where is the need of disclosing to God all my wants if he already sees and knows them better than I? True, he knows them. But God makes as if he knew not the necessities about which you do not speak to him, and for which you seek not his aid. Our Savior knew well that Lazarus was dead, and yet he acted as if he had knew it not until Mary Magdalene had told him of it. And then he comforted her by raising her brother to life again. <coughs> Spiritual reading, Corm Sanctissimo. 23rd visit. 
Many Christians submit to great fatigue and expose themselves to many dangers to visit the places in the Holy Land where our most loving Savior was born, suffered, and died. We need not undertake so long a journey nor expose ourselves to so many dangers. The same Lord is near us and dwells in the church only a few steps distant from our homes. If pilgrims say, Saint, says St. Paulinus, consider it <clears throat> a great thing to bring back a little dust from the crib or from the holy sepulcher in which Jesus was buried, with what ardor should we not visit the Blessed Sacrament where the same Jesus is in person and where we can go without encountering so much fatigue and so many dangers? A religious person to whom God has given great love for the most blessed sacrament, among us other things, wrote as follows in a letter, quote, I see that every good thing I have comes to me from the most blessed sacrament. I have given and consecrated my whole self to Jesus in this sacrament. I see innumerable graces which are not granted because people do not go to this divine sacrament. I see the great desire that our Lord has to dispense his graces in this sacrament. O holy mystery, O sacred host, where is it that God best displays his power if it is not in this host? For this host contains all that God has ever done for us. Let us not envy the blessed in heaven, since on earth we have the same Lord. But with greater wonders of his love, induce all with whom you speak to devote themselves to the most blessed sacrament. I speak thus because this sacrament enraptures my soul. Nor can I cease to speak of the most blessed sacrament, which deserves so greatly to be loved. I know not what to do for Jesus in this sacrament. Unquote. Thus the letter ends. O ye seraphim who remain sweetly burning with love around your and my Lord, though it is not indeed for love of you, but of me, that this King of Heaven is pleased to be present in this sacrament. O oh, loving angels, let me also burn with love, and do you enkindle your love in me, that with you I also may burn. O oh, my Jesus, teach me to know the greatness of the love thou bearest to men, that at the sight of so great love my desire to love thee and please thee may go on always increasing. I love thee, most amiable Lord, and I will always love thee, and this only, to please thee. My Jesus, I believe in thee, I hope in thee, I love thee, and I give myself to thee. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that thou art truly present in the most holy sacrament. I love thee above all things, I desire to possess thee within my soul. <clears throat> Since I am unable now to receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace thee as already there and unite myself wholly to thee. Never permit me to be separated from thee. Visit to Mary. Most amiable virgin, St. Bonaventure calls thee, quote, the mother of orphans. And St. Ephraim, moreover, calls thee, quote, the receiver of orphans. Alas, these wretched orphans are no other than poor sinners who have lost God. Behold, then I have recourse to thee, most holy Mary. I have lost my father, but thou art my mother who must enable me to recover him. <coughs> In this my so great misfortune I call thee to my aid. Do thou succor me. Shall I remain disconsolate? No, for Innocent III, speaking of thee, says, quote, Whoever called upon her and was not graciously heard by her, and whoever prayed to thee and was not heard and helped by thee, who was ever lost who had recourse to thee? He alone is lost who has not recourse to thee. Then, my queen, if thou desirest my salvation, enable me always to invoke and confide in thee. My own most holy Mary, give me confidence in thee. Concluding prayer, most holy immaculate virgin of my mother Mary. To thee, who art the mother of my Lord and the queen of the world, the advocate, the hope, the refuge of sinners, I have recourse today. I, who am the most miserable of all, I render to thee my most humble homage, O great queen. And I thank thee for all the graces thou hast conferred on me until now, particularly for having delivered me from hell, which I have so often deserved. I love thee, a most amiable lady, and for the love which I bear thee, I promise to serve thee always, and to do all in my power to make others love thee also. I place in thee all my hopes. I confide my salvation to thy care. Accept me for thy servant, and receive me under thy mantle, O Mother of Mercy. And since thou art so powerful with God, 
deliver me from all temptations, or rather, obtain for me the strength to triumph over them until death. Of thee I ask a perfect love of Jesus Christ, from thee I hope to die a good death. O my mother, for the love which thou bearest to God, I beseech thee to help me at all times, but especially at the last moment of my life. Leave me not, I beseech thee, until thou seest me safe in heaven, blessing thee and singing thy mercies for all eternity. Amen, so I hope, so may it be. Indulgence of 300 days for the above prayer. In nomen apache, fili, spiritu sancti, amen. Have a blessed morning and day, O slaves of Mary.